Hello, welcome to another unboxing video. Uh, if you come to this channel expecting uh, Microsoft Teams and development videos, um, I, those are the things I, I normally do on this channel, but I do occasionally do other things and unboxing videos are one of those things sometimes, and this is one of those. So if you only care about Microsoft Teams or software development, feel free to skip this one. Um, this is an unboxing kind of setup, first look of a lawnmower. This is a Hyundai HYM 460 SP lawnmower. So disclaimer, I paid for this completely with my own money. And the reason I'm doing this video is, uh, this is the video that I wanted to watch but couldn't find before buying it. Um, all the kind of things, all the questions I had but couldn't find answered anywhere. So I have not looked inside this box other than to get this paperwork out, which we're gonna go through in a minute. Um, so I will be coming to it with you for the very first time. So this is the box it comes in. The box is also fairly big. Um, in terms, it's kind of 73 centimeters by 57 centimeters by 52. The only other thing I've done prior to this video um, is have a glance through the paperwork. One of the things that were, was in here was a flyer. Which, and uh, this flyer basically says that um, Hyundai recommend uh, Aspen as a, a petrol source rather than regular unleaded petrol, um, be, mainly because it's got a longer shelf life. And so actually I went ahead and bought some of that stuff here. This is Aspen 4. Um, it's a substitute for unleaded petrol. And it's basically the same as unleaded petrol. It's just purer and uh, has a longer stable life. So uh, it's got a, a lifetime of kind of three to five years. What that means is I can leave it, uh, the fuel in the, in the lawnmower over the winter um, for the kind of four, five, six months when I'm not using it and it won't be a problem. Uh, like I say, I paid for this with my own money. The last thing I want is in a year or two to be fixing problems with the carburetor or whatever because I've left petrol in it over winter. At the same time, I also don't really want to be draining it down. Okay, so let's start off by having a quick look at the paperwork. We have this flyer about uh, using Aspen. This is the main manual. Uh, we also have a quick start guide. That's a general quick start guide for all lawnmowers. Uh, it's got some things in here about the assembly and basically how to set it up and get going with it. And there's a link as well to a YouTube video. Um, I did have a look at that YouTube video actually and it's pretty good. Um, but I don't think it's quite as real life as this, so that's what I'm hoping to inject here, a little bit of real lifeness. Um, it's also got some stuff about adding oil and petrol, the starting procedure, the stopping procedure. So it sounds like this is pretty much everything I need. Perhaps I'll start with that and use this kind of when I need to. All right, so let's have a look in the box. Oh, we also have a happy with your purchase. Please leave a review. Right, what's in the box? So there's a link actually, it's upside down. Uh, so if you get stuck, uh, there is uh, somewhere to go. And there's something about using oil. Uh, you need to make sure you fill it with oil. All right, so let's see what's in the box. So first of all, this looks like it's the, uh, the grass collector. Uh, I'm gonna put that to one side. Um, one of the reasons I got this lawnmower is that it mulches. Um, I probably won't be using that grass collector all that much, but it's obviously useful to have it. So let's take some of this protective wrapping off, and here you go. This is what it looks like. This is as it comes kind of in the box, so you can see it's kind of folded over on itself. This is also, I think, how you can store it. Um, I believe the uh, all the thing, all the arms and stuff fold into each other like this, um, so you can store it like this. I think as it comes in the box, a lot of these uh, cables are not necessarily connected. So that's one of the things we have to do. I did notice that in the quick start. So what we're gonna do now is lift it out of the box, set it on the floor, um, and then we'll get started with connecting the bits together and have a kind of closer look at it. Okay, so we are out of the box. Um, it was heavier than it looks. It's pretty heavy. If you've got somebody else to help, I would recommend it. It's pretty hard to get it out of the box. And also I didn't really know which bits were safe to pull on and which weren't to safe to pull on, so I opted for lifting it up by the wheels, um, which kind of made it a little bit harder. I did find some interesting things along the way that I wasn't ex necessarily expecting to find. This is the, uh, I guess it's the side uh, discharge chute. So that's an optional thing if you're doing side discharge. And my version also came with some oil. Uh, which is perfect because uh, I was starting to worry I didn't have any. Um, so some came in the box, which is very good news. I'm not sure if that's the same for everybody or whether it was just like a like a special deal I had or anything like that, but it's great to see that it comes in the box. Uh, and there's some stuff here. Ooh, come around. 
on adjusting the OPC cable, which I think we're gonna come on to in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna make a guess that all of this stuff lifts up. Oh, this bit comes off, okay. Uh, so that's the top of it, I think. Yep, yeah, that's the bit you hold. And then this bit, I'm assuming, comes up and round. And, the, oh, the other thing I found, I should mention, uh, where are they? It's a bag of stuff. Bag of bolts and whatnot, uh, which I'm gonna try and do with one hand. Okay, so there are four of these um, and no other bolts. This is, I'm not really sure what this is, but it's certainly not an unbolt. Um, so there's four of these and there's two things we need to do. The first is we need to attach this to this, to the base, and then we need to attach this side bit to up here. So I've made the kind of logical assumption that there's two bolts for each task. It's not immediately clear that that's true because there's actually two holes in here and there's two holes here. So uh, I was, I'm not really sure why there's two holes. It seems a bit confusing, but I'm only gonna put a bolt in one on each side and assume that's okay. It feels like it's okay. There's one already in here. Um, I'm gonna be adding one in here. I'm just gonna make it easier to fold it down later. Just take one off each side and fold them over. Um, but uh, this feels like the right thing to do. I, I'm doing it this way round, which looks kind of weird. It looks like maybe it's backwards to do it that way round. Um, the reason I'm doing it like that, and again, this is a bit of a guess, um, but these bolts are slightly shaped. You can see how they're, uh, they're, they're curved, and I think that's because they're supposed to curve into this uh, cylinder here. So that's the decision I've made. Uh, I figure it's okay. Seems to be about right. So I'm gonna do the same over here, and then we'll put the top bit on. This was not built for one-handed uh, assembly with whilst holding a camera um, but you can see these go in here as well I've actually done these the other way around from these ones uh, I'm not sure if that's right or not it just felt like this was more rounded than this bit goes in here is a bit more straight uh, I don't think it really matters so I'm gonna do that one and then I'm just gonna do this one on the other side pop that in um, it seems to fit nicely uh, it's very kind of sturdy there's not too much play um, so all looking good so far, it's looking more like a lawnmower. All right, so according to the uh, instructions, the next thing to do is to pull the recoil lever. Let's just move this round uh, so you can see a bit better. All right, pull the recoil lever, which I think is this one, slowly. Don't pull it actually, just pull it slowly. It's kind of stiff. Can feel it pulling the engine. And what you're supposed to do is coil it around this thing. Roy recoil loop, I think it's called. Let's do that. Don't really know how. I think just stick the... Oh, sorry, you can't see that. There we go. It is a bit fiddly um, just to do, but it, it kind of makes sense. It's just uh, just got to coil it around until it catches. Um, but you definitely kind of need two hands. You need one to take the strain off the, uh, the string, whatever it's called. Um, and uh, yeah, the other just to hook it in. Okay, so the next thing to do is to uh, fill up with oil. So I'm gonna use the oil they gave me, uh, which is good, which means I don't have to think about it. It's uh, whatever it is, four stroke SAE 30 petrol engine oil. I think you can also use 15W4 uh, engine oil. So SAE 30 or 15W4 engine oil. So as you might have guessed by now, I'm not an expert in this area. None of these things mean anything to me, um, but I'm using this one because it's the one that came in the box and it's got the picture of the lawnmower on the front. Okay, so this is the uh, the oil filling thing uh, because it's got a picture of an oil thing on it. And more importantly, this one over here has a picture of a petrol pump. I do have a complaint though. This yellow sticker says on it, use fresh unleaded petrol, no oil. I feel like this would be much better on over here where you put the petrol in because otherwise I'm looking at this which is the oil filler and thinking no oil what am I doing wrong so that should be over by the petrol in here let's have a look so it's kind of stiff we have a dipstick I think you can see that um, and so the dipstick uh, has kind of some lines on it uh, you probably not it's probably not going to focus very well uh, it looks like a standard dipstick, but it's got like a, a low mark and a high mark. So the plan is put some oil in here, check it every now and again with the dipstick to get it somewhere in between low and high. There we go, just about to see that now. Get it in between low and high. So that's what we're going to do. All right, now I've got a little funnel because I thought that might help. Uh, 
one of the things I did, because I'm that kind of person, uh, was look up in the manual the uh, capacity of uh, the oil tank. So how much oil can you put in here? And it has a 600 milliliter capacity. And this bottle is 600 milliliters. So I'm gonna kind of pour this in fairly confidently that most of it's gonna go in, um, but I will check kind of towards the end. Um, but if it's gonna take this long to go down, this could take a little while. Perhaps I will try and pour more carefully without the funnel. Yeah, that's gonna take forever. Alrighty, moment of truth. So, stick this down here and back up again. Yeah, it's kind of on the, it's still settling I think. Uh, you kind of see it's up one side but not the other. Uh, let's just try again and see. In case I caught it on the side or something. Yeah, so it's still filling in but it's more or less kind of in level with the high point maybe um, but it's not completely completely filled in I think it's probably still finding its level to be honest uh, oh there we go just under the so you can't see that sorry just under the high point there yeah it's kind of falling back down because I'm holding it up the wrong way so you can see it and let's put the top back on there we go all right so next up is fuel so that's around the other side uh, it's over here, so let's set this down. Uh, the only other thing I've done is I've opened the door because uh, it seems like a sensible thing to do when you're filling up with petrol. Um, so what I do have is a standard green uh, petrol container and it's got one of the hoses on the front on the top. So I, can, I can pull that out and hopefully I can, yeah, this looks like it's the same size. So it turned out you can screw these that normally come in fuel tanks onto a bottle of Aspen 4, uh, but you do need two hands to do it. You need to kind of push and turn. So that makes things considerably easier. So now I can go ahead and uh, fill up. I'm not gonna put loads and loads in. Um, I'm not gonna use it that much. I'm gonna use it today um, and maybe in a week's time and stuff like that. And I kind of wanna gauge how much fuel it's going through as well. So I'm just gonna put that much in for now. Um, that should see us uh, getting started and, and do at least one cut. All right, the next thing we need to do is to set the cutting height. So the cutting height is all controlled by one handle right here. Um, and it looks like this might not be a one-handed job. Uh, it looks like you sort of pull it one way or the other and pull. Okay, so by putting one hand on here, I can pull this out and then go up. And I can go up and down and you can see that it raises all the wheels at the same time and I'm going to put it right up to the top maximum height of cut uh, it's recommended you do maximum height of cut when you start when the uh, when you first start the machine up so that's what I'm doing the other thing I want to do is make sure that the mulching plug is in uh, like I said at the start I want to use this for mulching so under here uh, you can see well I've never seen a mulching plug before so I guess that's it uh, I've no idea really um, Let's have a look, see if it comes out. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I guess it's a mulching plug, isn't it? It's, uh... oh, there you go. It does come out. It looks like this. All right, so I'm gonna guess that's the mulching plug. If you don't wanna do mulching, uh, take it out and you can see the blades in there. Very nice. Um, and uh, if you were doing a rear discharge or putting the bag on or anything like that, uh, you would, uh, you would take that out, um, but by putting it in, you're gonna force all the clippings back into the system um, to be mulched up. The thing I haven't done yet are these cables. So these were uh, kind of coiled around the, uh, the handles when we put them together, and they still don't go anywhere. Uh, they're going to uh, connect to the two handles up at the top. Um, I think that's the operator handle, the OPC handle, so it cuts out when you're not looking at it, or when you're not holding it and the drive handle to make it go. So we'll do those in a minute. I'm just gonna fix the mulching plug um, and then we'll put these cables in. All right, so there's two cables and you can see they go to slightly different places. There's this one, which goes into the main engine and there's this one, which comes from kind of the body. So the one that goes into the engine, that's the OPC cable. So you wanna 
you want to trace that one back all the way up um, and that's the one that wants to go uh, on the front handle here and the other one which is the drive is the one that wants to go on the back and it's kind of a case of uh, finding the hole and just looping it in um, to make it sort of stick there we go so you can see they're now both attached you do have to kind of uh, just prise these out these levers out of the holes to give enough slack to get the cables in um, and uh, and then you can go again one of the things it says in the manual is that with this um, OPC cable if there's more than 10 millimeters of slack then you should tighten the cable that definitely feels like more than 10 millimeters of slack so I think we need to do some tightening the tightening is done if you come around to where it goes into the engine down here uh, you can see there's a locking nut and an adjustment nut so it'd be a case of undoing the locking nut and then screwing the adjustment nut uh, just to bring this in a little bit um, to remove some of that tension um, and then tightening the locking nut up again which I'm going to do without the camera because it definitely needs two hands The drive cable also has a similar adjustment right here, um, but actually uh, for me there is really no uh, real play in this uh, kind of drive cable, so I'm not going to touch that too much for now, um, but the, the OPC one was definitely worth doing and now it's much much happier, uh, there's no play there at all really. Okay, so I've come outside. Um, because I think we're pretty much ready to go um, and uh, actually you can see better than you could inside really what this thing looks like it's pretty impressive looking I've got to say uh, it looks very nice so the plan is uh, I'm going to push the primer five times I'm going to hold down the OPC lever and I'm going to pull this until it starts assuming it starts um, I'm going to go up and down a few times I'm just not going to do the whole lawn um, I'm just going to do a strip or two just to get a feel for it. I'm going to keep it on the maximum height because I just want to get a feel for what the mower is like. Um, come back, turn off and uh, we'll talk about it. So here we are, due to a colossal error in judgment, um, I didn't press record uh, once I put the camera on the tripod and was doing the mow. So there is no footage of me doing my first mow with this lawnmower, which is kind of a shame. Um, what it does mean though is that we'll have to save that for another video. Um, I don't know if you can see, but the, the lawn looks really nice. Um, it's a fairly high cut still and mulch. Um, there's real no evidence of um, kind of clumping or anything like that there's a little bit of clumping um, on the, some of the wheel tracks um, I kind of give it a break because the grass is pretty horrible and wet it's March here we're not we're only just into spring um, but it's nothing compared to what I'm used to with um, with another lawnmower I've had a electric which just really isn't powerful enough um, and 
yeah you just it doesn't doesn't do mulching and you can't just leave it it's just like clumps everywhere so um let me just uh go in for some close-ups but i'm really pleased with how it looks so you still it's still it's still quite long um i haven't really cut it short it's because it's um you know we're still kind of march time it's not a good practice to be cutting it really long now anyway you can see how nice and even it looks the cut is really nice I'm, I'm very pleased with how it's come out and actually you can see I don't have a very large garden um, so you might argue that something like this is a bit overkill and I'd probably agree with you um, it, it kind of is if I wasn't kind of a bit of enthusiast for this I really wanted one that mulched um, and the other reason for getting this slightly larger model um, rather than there is an entry level smaller model but it doesn't have a wash port and I was very keen to have something with a wash port and I'm going to try that in a moment actually um, but yeah overall very happy with the results here um, I think it's really nice all right let's have a look at this wash port then because having just used it um, I can now I'm on the patio slabs uh, they haven't been cleaned yet this year so it seems like a good opportunity to see uh, how the wash port works all right so if i can do it with one hand i'll show you what the underside of this looks like before it's been washed so it's pretty heavy but if i could just tip it up a little bit just so you can get a look at it underneath we'll see if we can do this you can see there's some grass on here just one use kind of 10 minutes maybe uh, obviously some grass clippings stuck to the top those are the kind of things we want to try and get rid of if we possibly can to the wash port. Okay, here all the you can now see the water gushing out, and then you turn the thing on and engage drive, I think, and that's it. Uh, not engage drive, you know what I mean, like turn it on for a bit and see what happens. So let's give that a go. seems to have done something there's uh, there's plenty of grass out here and out here so let's have a quick look underneath oh yeah much cleaner there's still some bits around actually but it's uh, it's taken off the worst of it I think and it's also sluiced it with water I guess which probably helps as well so pretty cool I'm not sure it's something I'd do every time um, but every now and again maybe all right so that kind of wraps up my unboxing set up first steps uh, of this um, I'm really pleased by this I think it's really good I'm looking forward to a summer or a whole season I guess of uh, of mowing with it um, I'm gonna mul mostly stick in mulch mode I think unless there's good reasons to collect clippings um, or anything like that but uh, I'm also very pleased with the results just from a first run still getting used to it uh, things I like about it, the drive speed's not too fast, not too slow. It's also entirely optional. Uh, you can just push the thing yourself. It's not so heavy. It's uh, it's quite easy enough just to push. Uh, it's also quite manoeuvrable. Um, you can see I don't have a very large garden and I have a tree over there. So getting in around the tree um, and the, the plants and stuff as well. Uh, definitely something that needs a little bit of practice on my side, I think. Um, but you can see I've gone in and around these plants here uh, that some of these aren't quite ready to be chopped up um, but you can see I had no problems kind of manoeuvring in and out of these again shame about the uh, forgetting to press record on the actual footage of me uh, footage of me uh, mowing but uh, we'll do that on another video for sure that's everything from me thanks very much for watching I hope you find it useful uh, if you do subscribe to me uh, press that bell icon for notifications when the the mowing actual mowing video comes up um, if you've got any questions about the thing, uh, anything you want me to try, anything that's not clear, uh, just let me know in the comments. Thanks very much.